I would bet pretty much everybody watching this ever has had one of these bag of bags. Mine, though, is pretty high class because it's a Pagani. I think that's a shoe, but I also think it's a car. Of course, it's had better days, so um, as you can tell, that's pretty much why we're gonna do this project, which is this. It is a plastic bag dispenser that can hang on the wall right above my trash can. Uh, there's no way I'm gonna rip saw this whole board as one piece. So we're, we're gonna cut it to rough short lengths. We'll worry about getting it more accurate later. Then we're gonna roughly clean up the outsides of the board with a plane. I'm not real worried about planing this thing super smooth. It's a rustic box. It's allowed to be a little wavy. So I have to apologize about the uh, blurriness. I was trying to be clever, changed my focus, and then I forgot to change it back. It's only gonna last a minute, so please bear with it. What you see here is me pretending I'm Sasquatch, and I'm drilling holes for the handle part on the back piece, and then cleaned out the waist in between with a chisel. I rounded over the tops of the boards just by using a chisel, cleaned it up later with a spoke shave. To strengthen the joints a little bit, I did want to do some joinery on this box, so I used my moving filter plane to create rabbits on the two sides. Rebates, rabbits, whatever. I put a 30 degree angle slope for the top piece and sawed out both pieces. I clamped the two pieces together and used a coping saw to cut out the, the quarter moon shape on the bottom. And then started to form the front, which I also used my moving filster plane to create rebates on. Rabbits. What? That front also needs a hole in it that's big enough for your hand to reach in and pull out a plastic bag. I should have created dados in the sides for this bottom piece, but I just used nails to hold it into its place. And I cut the angles on the lid of the box so that it would all fit together. I didn't calculate in the hinge itself. So I needed to go back out and clean out a little bit of a mortise for it. Then I nailed it all together with these really fine finished nails. I think this box looks pretty good as it is, but I wanted it to look rustic. So the first thing to do is to stress it a bit. And I did it the easy way using my spoke shave and sandpaper. These rustic country style finishes can be achieved pretty easily. You just have to remember you've got to do lots of layers. And here I'm starting off with my, uh, my old go-to of the steel wool and vinegar. That's going to take a while to dry, but after that I'm going to apply a sanding sealer. Here I'm using a really thin shellac. And then I'm just going to sand that smooth. Now that the wood has a nice dark base to it, I'm going to apply my first layer of paint. To keep the lid from being painted shut, I'm using a nail as a spacer. And then I started my first de-stressing with sandpaper to smooth out the paint and to remove some of it. It actually looks really good here, and I probably should have left it as that, but I took some black paint, mixed it with some plaster, and I painted that on. You can see it turns into like a, a slate gray color. Then I sanded that off, looking for the same distress level as the first time. Note that I'm wearing a dust mask in this situation. But here you can see the two layers of paint showing through. 
I then wanted to feather those edges a little bit, so I used a finer sandpaper here. This is a wet, dry 400 paper. At this point, I applied wax. Used the shoe polishing brush to buff that wax and then wiped it smooth. The wax is probably overkill, but in a couple months, it'll look great. At that point, you just assemble the whole box. And now you're ready to hang this thing up wherever you have room. Simple projects and simple finishes like this, which look complex, they make great gifts for people. So please subscribe, like, and comment. All right, I hope everybody has a good weekend and get out there.